then uh, we take out, extract this one, this liquid, and along with gases, because on the top of this, there are some gaseous hydrocarbons, methane, ethane, propane, butane, all these are your gaseous form, pentane as well, sometimes after that it becomes, starts uh, getting the liquid uh, with the car higher carbon number, carbon 5, 6 onwards, says it will be liquid form. This, before that, all these are in gaseous form. So, this gaseous or this liquid products, we collect get it from the refineries. After that, what we do? We bring into small uh, hydrocarbons by cracking. This is called petroleum cracking or uh, the petroleum oil cracking or the your refinery oil cracking. And during this cracking, we use the catalyst. Okay. Right. Somebody has just joined 20. Okay, just fine. Right. Okay. Yep. All right. So <coughs> this fuel is cracked into small components with small hydrocarbons. Hmm. So this cracking involves uh, catalysis, okay, catalysts, right? So this catalyst used in this industry should be a different type of catalyst which can be used for cracking this one. Now problem is that sulfur, sulfur poisoning which means in this petroleum product, it is your um, oil, this refinery oil that means your raw uh, refinery oil, there we have some uh, sulfur, sulfur compounds which later poisons this catalyst. This catalyst will be poisoned. Uh, it will be deactivated soon with this sulfur content. So we need to remove the sulfur. Later, we bring this one, this oil, to uh, this catalytic fraction, can be a department or chamber where we uh, catalyze this one into small hydrocarbons. So automobile exhaust systems, like our car exhaust gas, the motorcycle exhaust gases, these gases are harming the environment, is polluting the environment. These gases are released and is just coming into the environment. So the environmental air is polluted. So what we need to do, we need to convert these harmful gases into harmless gases by using the catalysts. So catalysts will be placed in the catalytic converter, right? So this is automobile exhaust systems where we use this catalyst. Bulk chemicals in various industries, in various industries, we have bulk amount of chemicals, sodium hydroxide, a lot of sodium hydroxide we need for making soaps, for making other chemicals. Hmm? These are the chemicals we need it very large amount uh, in industries. So this is your bulk chemicals. Just apart from that, we have fine chemicals. Fine chemicals related to not fine <laughs> size, right? This fine names came from little amount of product. We produce it because of our use. Uh, we have seldom use or rare use, so we did not to produce a lot. So when we are not going to produce a lot, small amount, these um, chemicals are known or referred to as fine chemicals. So bulk chemicals, just the reverse is that fine chemicals. That means little amount of chemicals uh, uh, that we need. As for example, we need chlorine. Chlorine, do we need a lot? Of sodium hydroxide, we need a lot. Sulfuric acid, we need a lot. Or other chemicals, we need a lot for our various purposes. And uh, these are the chemicals, suppose chlorine, and some other small, uh, like herbicides, pesticides, little. We need little amount of this production. So this chlorine is used to uh, disinfect or kill the germs in water. 
uh, it's uh, just uh, injected into the water bodies into the water system like swimming pool or drinking water we dose this one the, the chlorine but we have little use so these are the fine chemicals food processing industries we have catalyst also used and these fine chemicals to produce also we need at least to use uh, for this uh, uh, processing environmental aspects yes we need the catalyst as just now i discussed that our catalytic converter that needs catalyst to you know disintegrate it to uh, change the harmful gases into harmless gases so this is not only on one example many other examples are here we need uh, the catalyst for any chemical uh, treatment uh, in the wastewater treatment or anywhere where we save the environment right okay so energy processing uh, petroleum refineries makes intensive use of catalysis for alkylation catalytic cracking catalytic cracking which means breaking the long chain hydrocarbons into smaller pieces so here we have many uses we need to produce polymers polymers comes from ethylene propylene right butylene so these are the small components of this hydrocarbon that we need to produce other products so this is the raw materials that comes from the cracking of long chain hydrocarbons not only petroleum uh, boiling range hydrocarbons or diesel boiling range hydrocarbons or kerosene boiling range hydrocarbons but we need small molecules like ethylene so we produce polyethylene propylene we produce polypropylene we please built it uh, uh, your butadiene huh? so we produce synthetic butadiene rubber a lot of things we get it from petroleum so these are called petrochemicals huh? naphtha reforming naphtha is that uh, your hydrocarbon it's a suppose definition is different uh, you know so have the idea that c5 carbon 5 to carbon 6 uh, this or carbon 6 to carbon 7 not more uh, like this by uh, hydrocarbons or the hydrocarbon this is called light naphtha or in the range of uh, your carbon that is few uh, pet, uh, petrol or gasoline and kerosene in between that number of hydrocarbon like your carbon 8 9 huh, or 10 and best can be considered as this naphtha so these are the heavy naphtha so these are that uh, hydrocarbon we get it from uh, petroleum fraction and all these needs catalysts right steam reforming conversion of hydrocarbons into synthesis gases syn gas is that your hydrogen and carbon monoxide this mixture is called synthesis gases which is used for producing other hydrocarbons like your methane some other hydrocarbons so this is that syn gas in or synthesis gas the exhaust from uh, burning fossil fuels is treated via catalysis hmm. so catalytic converter use uh, frequently use this catalyst like platinum rhodium that are used to break down some of the harmful byproducts of automobile exhaust into harmless products as for example carbon monoxide is producing carbon dioxide and nitrogen the question comes carbon dioxide is again another pollutant very true carbon monoxide is also but carbon monoxide is doing more harm than carbon dioxide is doing huh. carbon dioxide yes it can be absorbed by plants as well uh, but this carbon monoxide is doing more harm to us to the other animals because it's absorbed in this hemoglobin our your blood system and it's really get uh, making a very fat, uh, fatal cases even death okay so with regard to synthetic fuels an old but still important process is that fisher crops synthesis of hydrocarbons from the syn gas syn gas as i mentioned is hydrogen and carbon monoxide 
uh, which itself is processed via water gas shift reaction. Water gas gas shift reaction is that carbon monoxide and water, water not water, in fact this is steam uh, in the form of vapor. So water in the form of vapor which means steam and carbon dioxide is producing carbon dioxide and hydrogen. In between we can get this hydrogen and carbon monoxide. So this is catalyzed by iron. This is not only iron but other catalyst can also be used like cobalt, like other metals that can also be used. We need to check which one is feasible or good. There are some advantages and disadvantages of this, of using this catalyst in terms of not only the fast reaction, but the poisoning. Some of the catalysts are poisoned very fast. Poisoned means it's that deactivated. Others are not deactivated. So which one we want? We want that our catalysts should give us service. If it stops giving us service, then that catalyst, however inexpensive or expensive, whatever it is, we do not need that. We need a catalyst that serves our purpose. Sometimes we compromise on this part with money. Catalysts are costly. Some of the costly catalysts we buy because we find that these catalysts do not contaminate or so far do not uh, you know get contaminated or deactivated or poisoned very fast rather some other inexpensive or the less costly cheaper catalyst sometimes can be poisoned or deactivated or lose its activity faster so we choose this material as that our catalyst we can reuse this one so no problem once we uh, can reuse this one well we can invest we can uh, you know uh, invest our money for this good purpose means economic purpose uh, that it serves right give biodiesel and related biofuels require processing via both inorganic and biocatalyst. So later we'll discuss it in details if we get this opportunity. Biodiesel is formed with, uh, with the hydrocarbon third 1415 range, a carbon number uh, range hydrocarbons. These are diesel boiling range, but it's if it comes from biological origin, then we call it biodiesel, right? It's if it is if it comes from petroleum sources means your uh, refinery sources we do not call it as diesel but rather we call it as diesel. Biodiesel comes from biological activities like your enzyme is uh, you know forming this any hydrocarbon uh, into this diesel boiling range hydrocarbons. So this is that biodiesel. Diesel or gas gasoline is not only one component, one hydrocarbon, it's not that, it's a range of hydrocarbons, right? Usually suppose C7, carbon 7, carbon 8, this is a mixture of this. Yeah, so kerosene, boiling your diesel, your uh, uh, petrol, gasoline, huh? all these are not only pure one hydrocarbon, uh, it's a mixture sometimes of course it's uh, for this catalytic your for this conversion purposes it has the structure that gives us the knocking performance that is your good conversion is possible uh, that is rated octane number octane number if it goes high is better for us to you for our engine uh, because this one is the cyclic compound that gives better your uh, performance in the engine, engine is not knocked down. Knocked down means producing sound. Why it produces sound? Because the straight chain hydrocarbon like your uh, carbon 7, uh, heptane, even octane, normal range hydrocarbon. If we crack this one or if we you know, use this one as the fuel, 
At that time, it produces free radicals. And these free radicals are unstable. When it's unstable, it wants to be stable. When it's going to be stable, at that time, it produces some knocking performance, that means some sound in the, during this combustion, in the engine. So engine, we get it, uh, that uh, sound from this combustion of this hydrocarbon, straight chain hydrocarbon. So that's why, we do not need this straight chain hydrocarbon, rather if we can change it to cyclic, it's good. So that one is okay, different chapter. Uh, so this biodiesel related biofuels require processing via inorganic and biocatalyst. We will discuss it later if we get time that in details of this uh, biocatalyst, and that is enzymatic catalyst also known as biocatalyst. So fuel cells, rely on catalyst for both anodic and cathodic reactions. We have this electrolysis or this uh, electrochemical reactions which involves this anodic and cathodic reaction simultaneously because this is redox reaction. Redox is that if I previously I taught you, I think you were the students who took electrochemistry. Well, so in fuel cells, uh, we have subcatalyst to use. All right, the next. Uh, all right, all chemicals, as just I mentioned, is that large scale of chemicals, apart from fine chemicals, fine chemicals, small scale production, large scale production is that bulk chemicals. These are categorized as bulk chemical. So produced via catalytic oxidation, often using oxygen uh, well, for this oxygen is not the catalyst, but is uh, can be in presence of oxygen. So examples include nitric acid, forming ammonia, sulfuric acid. These are the catalysts. Uh, no, that the product. Sorry, the products: nitric acid, sulfuric acid uh, from sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide by contact process. Uh, terephthalic acid from paraxylene, acrylic acid from propylene or propene or acrylonitrile from propane and ammonia. So many other chemicals, chemical products are generated by large scale reduction via hydrogenation. So the largest scale example is ammonia. This is produced uh, in ammonia, your fertilizer company, which is prepared via the Haber process from nitrogen. Nitrogen and its hydrogen together with it will form ammonia. Methanol is prepared from carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. So all these needs catalyst, uh, catalytic reaction. So I will try to, you know, uh, highlight this one later. Uh, some of the things, some of the important chemicals that we get from uh, catalysis. Because you, the uh, students, will find jobs, a job in the industry as chemists, right? Where you will uh, be dealing with the reactions involving this catalysis using the catalysts. So, how the catalysts are poisoned or deactivated, uh, you should know that one. You should uh, you know, focus on that, your catalytic performance in a better way, how we can, you, you can use this catalyst in a better way, right? Which means more economical way. Uh, we have the catalyst, of course, but these are expensive, very expensive sometimes, may not be economical. So we have to compromise with that, with the cost as well. So many things we need to consider, right? So bulk polymers derived from ethylene and propylene are often prepared via ziegler natta catalyst, that is titanium-based catalyst, titanium tetrachloride or titanium trichloride uh, catalysts are used in this catalysis reaction. Polyesters, polyamides and isocyanates are derived via acid-base catalysis. So most carbonylization processes require metal catalysts. Right. All right. So these are the areas where we use these catalysts. Fine chemicals, just I discussed. 
that this needs also catalyst. Food processing, one of the most obvious applications of catalysis is the hydrogenation. Hydrogenation, which means addition of this hydrogen. When we are adding hydrogen, that means what? Unsaturated hydrocarbons are converted to saturated hydrocarbon. So reaction with hydrogen gas of fats, using fats, oils, these are unsaturated hydrocarbons where we add hydrogen to produce saturated hydrocarbon and nickel catalysts uh, can be used to produce a margarine uh, from fats. Many other foodstuffs are prepared via biocatalysis also using biocatalysts means using enzymes. This is nickel is quite uh, widely used for producing this marga uh, margarine and maybe some other catalysts are also there as I told you before that all the metals cannot be considered as our catalysts. Why? We will just later we will see that some of the things strange things that we find from this catalyst. A strange means unwanted things, right? All right. We do not want that that our product, but uh, we want an, a, a specific product. For this specific product to get, we need a specific catalyst. If we use a different catalyst, our products may uh, be different. Just products will be different, right? How is it? I will give you one example later. Just after this, one after this. Okay, so environment, from that uh, point of view, uh, we will discuss about the uh, catalyst used in catalytic converter. In the impurities in a reaction mixture can also adsorb onto the surface of a catalyst, right? Thus, removing potential sites for gas molecules and decreasing the efficiency. Potential adsorption sites are, you know, covered with these impurities. So these impurities, this is called gas, your poison, catalyst poisoning. This one can be from the reactants or from the products. Products forming something unwanted thing, something, uh, you know, some other products are forming along with our main product, some other products are forming. This can be, uh, you know, act as, this can act as the poison for the catalyst. That means this one can be absorbed in the catalyst, uh, catalytic surface, uh, whereby it cannot be dissolved. Right, it's, it's remaining there. So this way, catalyst is poisoned. So what we need to do is that catalyst has to be replaced and also expensive, this one. So it's, again, costs involved. When the cost is involved, really difficult for us to accept this one as a catalyst. The process has to be shut down. Another problem, because shutting down Re cleaning the catalyst again using this one is really bad for the production sites when we need the uh, whole production process in a continuous process. Continuous process means 24 hours running. Ah, 24 hours running, there are many industries you will find that it's running for 24 hours. There are some shutdowns or major breakdown what uh, sometimes comes in and they incur loss, a great loss, which means production is hampered and to, region, to restart the production, it takes two to three days to restart, whereby for one day, no production, no money is generated is, uh, there, which means no profit. So it's a great loss for the industries when they earn a million, million ringgit per day, suppose. Eh? A lot of money is it? not million, maybe like that, a lot of money, right, per day. So it's a great loss, in fact, right? So this one, uh, we 
have to be very careful that our process should not be shut down if it is a continuous process whereby that whole system is running 24 hours right i have the experience i worked in a fertilizer company where we found that this fertilizer if we need to shut down it takes three days to you know start up right 72 hours which means for 24 hours 24 hours uh, 24 hours three days 72 hours right so it's a huge loss there huge loss i cannot remember the amount but what i can uh, what i know what the idea is that a lot of money is uh, uh, they lose it because the sheep is waiting for the product to take and they need to also give money to this for this delay for their delay uh, for one day delay for the ship uh, that will carry the product they need to pay also right because the condition was that they will uh, five days within five days all the materials will be delivered now it's taking five six seven eight nine days ten days so all these days they are losing money means your the ship liner they will claim money from them there is an agreement with them right all right so sulfur is again a uh, culprit for this catalyst which means sulfur poison that one so haber bosch process haber haber process or there is another name haber bosch uh, process where we produce ammonia and uh, for this sulfur acts as a cat uh, your catalyst poison uh, poison poison the catalyst so we need to remove sulfur desulfurized we need to desulfurize the whole system that means the raw materials from there we need to clean sulfur we need to remove sulfur lead is another poison for this catalytic converted in cars because it's producing environmental pollution also not only the catalyst poisoning but also lead when we use it comes to the environment after its use right so there is another question of environmental pollution okay. now substances that reduce the action of catalyst are called catalyst inhibitor if reversible and catalyst poisons if irreversible ah sometimes we find that the reaction is going too fast too fast we control this one so we add something huh, which is known as that inhibitor this is irreversible which means which that's forward and backward reactions that is irreversible but when we use this catalyst a poison uh, if anything uh, that is poisoning the catalytic uh, surface is that it is irreversible that means we need to clean that poison out we need to remove the foreign materials that is the poison now promoters such as are the substances that increase the catalytic activity catalyst itself is working right however we need we find that catalyst needs to be activated faster so we bring another substance which acts as a promoter even though they are not catalyst by themselves but they help uh, the catalytic activity to uh, go faster all right so inhibitors are sometimes referred to as negative catalyst since they decrease the reaction rate reaction rate is decreased by the presence of inhibitors sometimes we use this one sometimes we do not use this one uh, unless means sometimes uh, by choice we add inhibitors because we need to control the reaction it's too fast right out of our control this exothermic reaction is going very fast out of our control we need to use the inhibitor sometimes yes by intentionally sometimes we do not need suppose 
but somehow it, uh, you know, came in the line. But we found that it's not a catalyst poisons, rather it's inhibiting that can be right. However, uh, by choice, sometimes we add this inhibitor. However, the term inhibitor is preferred since they do not work uh, by introducing a reaction path with higher activation energy. Uh, this would not reduce the rate since the reaction would continue to occur by the non-catalyzed path. Instead, they act either by deactivating the catalysts or by removing reaction intermediates such as free radicals. So free radicals are forming our reaction is you know getting a different shape or producing some other thing so we need to treat these free radicals by another substance which is known as inhibitor this is not a catalyst all right so now specificity specificity is that in some cases the choice of catalyst can influence the product in some cases the choice of this catalyst can influence the products, which means product selectivity. If, we, if you are deserving any particular product to, pro, to be produced from a reaction, from uh, your catalytic reaction, you have the reactants, uh, you have a particular catalyst for this, for a particular product. Your same reactants suppose same reactant you are using you brought a different catalyst your product will be different than your desired product simply by changing the catalyst your raw material is same you just used one catalyst you are getting one product you remove that catalyst you bring another catalyst you are getting a different product uh, suppose ethanol undergoes with different can you see now is it okay can anybody answer please respond can you okay. okay in the length right sometimes it goes out of length all right fine then if it is so please inform me otherwise i'll continue all right ethanol Ethanol undergoes different reactions depending on the metal used as the catalyst. Now, the distance between active sites and their similarity with the bond lengths determines the method of adsorption and affects which bonds are weakened. All right, you see that here, copper, huh? this is copper, surface of this catalyst is copper, right? Okay. You have C2H5OH, ethanol, right? Ethanol on the surface of copper, this C, C carbon, this ash, your, this color, huh? Is your gray color, right? Okay. So these two, carbon, carbon, white is hydrogen, 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 red one is O, oxygen, right? Hydrogen. So this is hydroxyl ion OH, carbon, carbon, hydrogen, 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 right? So carbon, three hydrogens, carbon, two hydrogens, this is oxygen, this is hydrogen, right? C2H5. Now, if the bond length between these two is that carbon, uh, sorry, the oxygen and hydrogen, Right, it's just based on this bond and two are sitting here, right? Now, it's on copper. Copper is okay, fine. It's just producing your CH3, CHO, acetaldehyde plus hydrogen. H2 hydrogen, CH3, CHO, right? Okay. Now, if you change your product, your raw material was ethanol. Very good. You change the surface a catalyst, different catalyst. Here it was copper. Here it is aluminia. Aluminia is aluminium hydroxide, Al2, Al2O3. 
So we have got alumina as the catalyst when we have uh, methanol, ethan, uh, sorry, um, ethanol. Same way. Now you look at it here. Here it is carbon, right? If it comes this way, is that this surface based on this, it's finding that your uh, this way it's working this way, which means this oxygen, uh, your um, oxygen and bond length of this carbon and oxygen is just fitting well with this surface. So similarity with the bond length, uh, with the length of the bond, the active site, the distance between the active sites, this one active site, another active site, distance between the active sites is responsible for this one to be seated here like this. And here the active sites is smaller and it allows this uh, your specification, which means this oxygen and hydrogen can find the active sites here. This your uh, yellow color, you know, dot dot line. These are the active sites of the catalyst. Here, blue color, right, of this active sites of this aluminium catalyst. Now, here we find that dehydration, water is removed and C2H4 is formed, ethylene, which means carbon, hydrogen, double bond, cut, yes, CH2, CH2, right? And water is split off. Now, you were expecting this acetaldehyde CH3CHO, you are finding this one C2H4 if you change the catalyst from copper to aluminum, right? So it's very, very important that we need to choose based on our uh, reactants and the pro desired products, which catalyst we is, is you know, that uh, helpful for this reaction to occur. Sometimes it happens like this. So the same way just I discussed, the active sites are the same distance apart as the length of N, OH bond. These active sites are the same distance apart as the length of this OH bond. So it breaks to release hydrogen gas. In this case, alumina Al2O3 dehydration or the removal water, removal of water occurs where the active sites, these active sites are the same distance apart as the length of a carbon oxygen bond is involved, right? It breaks to release an hydroxyl group, a, a, suppose a hydroxyl group, not N, huh? a. right? So it will produce water and ethylene, that is C2H4. Yeah. All right, so thank you very much. Please, I end. Okay, just a minute.